Grace and peace to you, Christ Community family. I pray that you are healthy and well as we come together on this Ash Wednesday for our Wednesday's Word, our midweek devotional, as we mark the season, at the beginning of the season of Lent. Uh, let me read to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 40 through 44. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Amen. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the season of Lent. And Lent marks the season of 40 days before we remember Christ's death and ultimately his resurrection. But nowadays, many people don't even grasp the depth and gravity of this Lenten season. They just solely focus on, hey, what are you going to give up for Lent? What are you going to give up for Lent? And that's it. Lent isn't, about a se- isn't a season about giving up. Lent isn't a season about what you're going to give up, what I'm going to give up. Lent, church, is a season all about Jesus Christ. And that's why I believe this passage is incredibly important. And I pray that it sets the tone for our church family as we mark the beginning of this journey together in this Lenten season. Now, if we go back into our passage, Jesus enters into the Garden of Gethsemane with a heavy heart. Jesus was in agony of what he just experienced. The Last Supper, where he knew that one of his own, one of his beloved, was going to betray him. He knew that one of his own, one of his beloved, was going to deny that he even knew about him, the rabbi, his beloved teacher. He knew that his disciples would ultimately succumb to this temptation of being complacent and let down their guards. But the biggest agony that Jesus probably held was that he knew what was coming. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Now if you go back into our passage for our devotional in Luke 22, we see this metaphor in verse 44, And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, And his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. But the fascinating thing is, there are people that argue that this actually wasn't a metaphor. Because people with this specific condition, especially when they have extreme anguish or physical strain that can ultimately cause the capillary blood vessels to dilate and then burst, which ultimately mixes in with sweat and blood, can actually happen. But I don't think Luke wrote this wanting for us to argue whether or not Jesus actually had drops of blood falling on the ground as he prayed. But I think Luke wanted the church back then and the church today to understand the depth and gravity and intensity of Jesus' emotional and physical trauma. He bore the weight of the world. He didn't just do a quick fix. He bore that emotional and physical trauma. You know, I started this devotional saying that we have way too many present-day Christians thinking that Lent is only about giving up something and and asking, hey, are you going to give up sweets? Are you going to give up uh, uh, sugar? Are you going to give up uh, alcohol? Are you going to give up, you know, it's people just make it all about something that they're going to give up. But this passage teaches and challenges us to dig in. And to try to grasp the intensity of Jesus' emotional and physical trauma. There are too many Christians in this world that forget about the powerful humanity of Jesus Christ. The powerful humanity of Jesus' name that ultimately can bring us closer to Him. Jesus understands our pain and sorrows. Jesus has been in our shoes. He's been in our place. Jesus understands our trials and temptations and tribulations. Who are we to control? Who knows what our pains and sorrows are? Who are we to control if Jesus already knows? 
Who are we to try to minimize our own pain and control our pain when Jesus is the one who knows our pain the best? Jesus' emotional and physical trauma through all of this didn't make him less of a God. But it gave us the perfect example to earnestly pray and to pray with our heart, mind, and soul, to pray with our sweat and tears, to pray with every ounce of strength in our being. Don't just pray to pray. Don't just read the Bible to read the Bible. We started off, church, with our 2023 ministry year with the theme, Step Up and Step Out. Because we cannot be complacent Christians. We cannot be complacent followers of Christ. That doesn't make sense. We need to get uncomfortable. We need to get in the trenches. We need to completely surrender our lives to Jesus Christ. Why? Because we need Jesus. So may we earnestly pray. May we earnestly embody Christ in who we are and what we do. And may we be the people, people of Christ that, we, that encounters Christ. But may we also uh, share the love of Christ with the people we encounter especially in this Lenten season. May the Lord bless you and keep you. I hope you have a great week. I hope you have, I hope you have a blessed week. And I hope you have a blessed journey this Lenten season. God bless.